Hello, welcome to my Google Hangout. This is David Chelsea. This is the second Google Hangout for April 30th, 2015. Uh, I'm doing this because the first one didn't exactly go according to plan. I'm going to edit out that middle bit where the camera was on me and not sharing uh, Photoshop the way that I was hoping it would. Anyway, and I have Jacob Bercy here, my friend and assistant. Well, I have right. Milan Ersig. A documentarian, and we're going to be chattering a little bit through a demonstration of how to do kaleidoscope patterns in Photoshop. Uh, let me just share my desktop with you. Start screen share. See, this is where I went wrong before. This is what I should have been doing. Not that you want to have this window open. Uh, you want to have Photoshop open. Milan, isn't that a pretty pattern? That's, I think you chose wisely. I don't know. I don't know if this is copyright, but it kind of doesn't matter because it's soon going to be unrecognizable. Um, and this is a, a drip painting. It may be by Pollock. It may be by one of Pollock's many imitators. I'm not really a fan of abstract painting, but once you add kaleidoscopic symmetry, uh, they turn into, I think, really fascinating patterns. So let me just get to tools. And first, I'm going to expand the canvas a little bit. Anyway, by the way, Milan, have you read any good comic books lately? You know, uh, I think last time we were discussing, I, I had started uh scott mcleod's the sculptor ah and but i had i've kind of stopped at the same spot that i'm at i haven't had a chance to really dive back into it so uh you know i've started it but have not finished or continued and i've enjoyed it mm -hmm. uh I, I i think it's uh it's intriguing you know when i started it it, it was a pretty good page turn you know i kept wanting to see what happened and yeah. uh, the artwork is, is nice mm -hmm. as well. So I took this image area and I copied it and I pasted it into a new layer. And now I'm going to completely erase the bottom layer. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to Ooh, I need to select this. Yes, I'm going to rotate this bit. I'm going to rotate it. Oh, you told me to shift. Oh, that's nice. 45 degrees. Except that's a section of the background, unfortunately. You know, it's always something. <laughs> I'm not going to apply the transformation. I'm going to select this area, and I'm going to... Rotate this bit. Forty-five degrees. And now I'm going to apply the transformation. And I'm going to create a little triangular area. This is a right triangle. Now this is one of uh, four different ways that you can create a kaleidoscopic pattern is starting with a right triangle. You can also use an equilateral triangle. Uh, you can also use any size or shape rectangle. Um, and you can use a, a, a triangle, which is a, an equilateral triangle cut in half. So now, I'm going to take that bit and I'm going to flip it vertical. So I've created a mirror image and I'm going to bring the two halves of it together. Get very close. And now 
I have my basic tile. I'm going to once more rotate it back 45 degrees. And I'm going to create a clone of it. I'm going to flip that one. Sure back. Mm. What do you think of this one compared to the one that, uh, that we? Oh, that one had. was that one was very pretty. Uh, that's what I did earlier when the camera was on me instead of on Photoshop. And I think this one, this one has a nice kind of jewel-like quality. Uh, those almost look like turtle shells or some kind of um, fancy beetle. Sort of like Hungry Hungry Hippos sub uh, turtles. Yeah. Well, now we don't know what this next one's going to turn into yet. We will see. This might be even nicer. But it seems to have a more limited palette. Um, something that John Updike once said in his capacity as art critic is that it must be very hard for abstract painters to avoid any kind of form that looks like a face. Um, but once you start introducing kaleidoscopic symmetry, you know, all sorts of animal uh, and flower forms just get in there naturally. Now I'm going to take this bit and I'm going to flip it vertically so that it creates a mirror image of that bit. And already I'm starting to see some kind of, oh, no, that one I didn't want to do. It wanted to start rotating. Okay, so now it's pretty interesting. I think I want to get a little bit of a wider canvas, even than that, and probably I'm going to wind up creating way too big a file, but then I'll just bump down the resolution after. Uh, I've done all the work. Okay. Oh, so what I need to do is create a clone of that once more, line it up. And I'm seeing, okay, let's get a little closer in. It's nice to line these things up absolutely by the pixel. But I'm seeing a kind of bird face here. You, you see it? Sort of like a parrot? Not a little bit, yeah. Maybe an owl. All right. Okay. So I'm going to do this again. And this time I don't have to flip it because it's a symmetrical clone <clears throat> of the other bit. Get in really close. Make sure it lines up to the pixel. And, you know, that's a nice bedspread or 
quilt or oriental rug. Uh, a little heavy on the yellow, but uh, very pretty, I think. And uh, now I'm going to crop it. And let's see, what's, what's the image size on this? Uh, not too huge, but let's cut it down to like 900 pixels wide. And save it. Okay. Oh, do I need to flatten the image? Yeah. Save it. And that's the end result. Now, I have a lot of these kind of <coughs> images posted on my Patreon page, a lot of uh, not safe for work images that I took from images uh, of classical nudity and uh, news photos of Abu Ghraib and, uh, you know, in, in pornography that created all sorts of uh, strange fleshy landscapes that, that, that have this kind of symmetry. Uh, those are can be viewed at the 499 level and above. Um, but I've also uh, posted about this from time to time on my blog, uh, dchelsea.com or whatever. Uh, and if you uh, Google David Chelsea Kaleidoscopes, you can see a lot more of these. Mostly I'm a cartoonist, mostly I draw things like Snow Angel and instructional books on perspective, but this is something I do that's that's fun whenever, whenever I have a spare moment. And once again, thank you for watching.